So we'll call this example five. This unit, this lesson has not gone in a nice order. We did example two, then three, then example one. Now we're doing example five, which didn't exist, and then we'll do example four. So for those of you that are like, oh, math is always so linear, this is your break. We're missing and mixing it up a bit. But we're going to find the exact value of cos of pi over 12. And here's the strategy that we're going to use. We're going to, to do our solution, we're going to use this idea. We're going to use any pi over 3, pi over 4, or pi over 6 family and add or subtract them, because that's what the sum and difference identities do, to get pi over 12. And what I did in the brackets there is I took the common ones that we know from our pi plate, and I changed the denominator so that they were over 12. And what I want you to do is to see if you can figure out which two you could use to add or subtract to get pi over 12. Also, if there's anyone who did not hand in their proofs or their take-home quiz yesterday, um, even if you sent me a picture of it, if you have the paper copy, you can put it in the bin today. All right, looks like most people have this written down. So now, can you see that you could pick two of those? You could either do the pi over 3 and pi over 4. Those ones subtract nicely to give me pi over 12. Or you might notice, oh, I could also do 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12 would work as well. And we're going to find in this type of question that there is going to be more than one right way of doing it. More than, like, I can get pi over 12 by doing pi over 3 minus pi over 4, <coughs> or I could get pi over 12 by doing pi over 4 minus pi over 3. So what does this look like as far as figuring out a solution? Okay. We first notice that we can get cos, and we need to write it this way. We want to solve what cos of pi over 12 is, so we write cos of pi over 12 equals we go, oh, I noticed that cos of pi over 12 is the same as 
4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. And then, if I reduce those down, I have an alpha minus beta formula. And my alpha is something on my unit circle, and my beta is something on my unit circle. And so we can put it into our formula. And this time in our formula, we know alpha and we know beta, so they get substituted right in. And every single one of those four is on your unit circle. And the nice thing about chapter seven is I let you use your official unit circle on your test. So now what I recommend is can you do each of these for memory, but then on the test, double check them with your pi plate to make sure that you have them right. Cos pi over 3, that's a half. Cos pi over 4, root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And cos of, or sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And from here, we have to multiply fractions and add them together to get a single fraction in the end. How do you multiply fractions? You multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. And you see that the bottoms will have a common denominator of 4 once you've multiplied them. And so we will get a final answer of root 2 plus root 6 over 4. And I'll give you a little bit of you know, a pattern you would notice if you would do another 50 pi over 12 questions for sine and cosine is that pi over 12 questions with sine and cosine, when you simplify them, will always have a root 2. Sometimes it will be positive, sometimes it will be negative. They will always have a root 6, sometimes positive, sometimes negative, and it will always be over 4. So this is what all of our pi over 12 questions are going to look like in the end for sine and for cosine. Tangent, they'll look different, but for sine and cosine, they will look like this. So part B was to figure out sine of 75 degrees. And right above it, I just converted 75 degrees, happens to be 5 pi over 12. So 75 degrees is a pi over 12 question. But we can do these questions in degrees just as easily as we can do them in radians. More typically, you will get this question in radians, but we're going to do one in degrees as well. So again, what we need to think of is, are there two things that add or subtract to give you 75 degrees? And I think 30 plus 45 is probably the most obvious. There's more than one way you could do 120 minus 45. Once you rewrite it as two things that are adding, then you can say, hey, I can use my alpha plus beta formulas. My alpha is 45. My beta is 30. So I go to my formula sheet and say, what's my sine alpha plus beta formula? It's sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. But this time we know alpha and we know beta, so we can substitute them in. Everybody out of scrap paper. Here, do a double check. 
to see if you got square root of 6 plus square root of 2 divided by 4. Now what we are going to do next, and you can take out your take out your unit circle or have them give them back. I will turn them back. There we go. Good. It is a good day to have them back. Right? Our next job is we are going to try to find the exact value of 17 pi over 12, but there are many different ways to add or subtract two things that equal 17 pi over 12. The two things have to be on your pi plate to begin with. Okay? And your job is to find two that add or subtract to get 17 pi over 12. Once you find one, you're going to put up your hand. I'm going to come verify it. I'm going to write it up on the board, and then that one's taken. So then you have to find a different one. Okay, so it's a little bit, you kind of have to want to work a little bit fast to see if you can find one that works. We found six of them. I, I could, we could spend days on this and keep finding more and more and more. But after finding six, there is a little bit of a pattern that is starting to appear. Besides the fact that these all equal 17 pi over 12, because obviously I'm going to say, what do all six have in common? Okay. They all have in common that they equal 17 pi over 12. Yes, but they have something else in common, all six of them, that's going to be a key to figuring out any pi over 12 question. What do you notice? What do you think? Like, they might have multiple things in common, but there's one thing in particular in common that helps. They all have one that has a four, right? They have to, so... Um, so if I chose, let's see, we've used pi over 4, we used 3 pi over 4, we used 5 pi over 4, we used 7 pi over 4, but if I went all the way around the circle once, and then went to pi over 4 again, can you see that I could get 9 pi over 4? And 9 pi over 4 would be 27 pi over 12. What would I have to subtract from this to get 17? I have to subtract 10 pi over 12. And 10 pi over 12 reduces nicely to 5 pi over 6. And we just found another one. And it's using this idea. You can start. You can pick any pi over 4 that you like. Okay? So let's say I gave you a new question and I said, oh, this time it's not 17 pi over 12. We're going to figure out what's the exact value of sine of 23 pi over 12. Start with any pi over 4 that you like. You can either choose pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, or 7 pi over 4. Sometimes people like to choose one that they think gets them close to 23, but it really does not matter one bit whatsoever. So I'm like, oh, I want to choose 7 pi over 4, because 7 pi over 4 is 21 pi over 12. How hard is it to figure out what you need to add here? Very easy. What over 12 makes 23 if you already have 21. You just need another 2. Then, if you reduce them, well, we knew we started with a pi over 4. It was 7 pi over 4. Does this one reduce to something on your pi plate? Yes, every single time it will. And we just found, this is the hardest part in these pi over 12 questions, is finding the two things that add or subtract. And we just noticed a pattern 
that you can choose any pi over 4 that you want and then figure out what has to go with it is really, really easy. So now we have all of these options and it doesn't matter which option you choose, you will get the same answer. So for this question, where we were at, I decided to choose 7 pi over 4. But you can choose any pi over 4 that you want. And so what I did there is I listed all the pi over 4 families from 0 to 2 pi and what they were over 12. And then when you reduce them, you will also always get an alpha and a beta that are on your unit circle, which is wonderful. And you can plug it into the correct formula from your formula sheet. All right, so from here, you plug the values into your pi plate. And again, you get a root 2, a root 6, and a 4. This time the root 6 is minus. So you have to be careful about your cast rule, making sure you have your positives and negatives there. So these pi over 12 questions, if you remember that you have to use a pi over 4, they are actually in the scope of things, very easy. Because they're done the same way every single time. They're very easy to recognize. Start with a power four, then it's just plugging things into the formula. So if you study this a little bit, this should be something on the test that's like a guaranteed three out of three, four out of four, when this question comes up. And I will tell you right now, there will be a pile over 12 question on your test, guaranteed. So here you go, you've got an easy three marks. Sometimes there's a part B to a question where they ask a secant after they ask a cos. And if you had to find out secant of 7 pi over 12, 17 pi over 12, you just figured out cos of 17 pi over 12 was root 2 minus root 6 over 4, so secant will just be the reciprocal. On some provincial exams in the past, they just asked secant of 17 pi over 12, and if the student didn't think to do cos first and then flip it, then they lost all the marks, and then they felt bad that some students lost all the marks, so then they started changing them to a part A, part B. Part A, can you do cos? And then part B was one mark, can you do secant now? sort of giving you that extra step. And sometimes on provincial exams, they do slightly different ones. Like this was find the exact value of 4 times cos of 11 pi over 12. Well, if you can find cos of 11 pi over 12, can you see that you just have to multiply your final answer by 4? But it was amazing across the province how many students left this question blank because there was a four in front. They're like, oh, I've never seen the number four before in my life, so I better leave this one. Okay? So we could first do this cos of 11 pi over 12 equals cos of, and now pick a random pi over 4. Do you want pi over 4? 3 pi over 4, 5 pi, it doesn't matter. Let's say you just like, I just like to use pi over 4. 
So if I chose pi over 4, pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12. Well, obviously, I don't have 11 yet. To get 11, you have to use advanced adding skills. 3 plus what is 11? It's 8. And then when you reduce these, well, you already knew this was pi over 4, but miraculously, when I reduce this, they both divide by 4. It is something on my pi over 4. So I go to my formula sheet, cos alpha plus theta is cos, cos minus sine, sine, root 2 over 2, this one will be negative 1 half, root 2 over 2, Positive root 3 over 2. So we get negative root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So 4 times cos of 11 pi over 12. You just multiply both sides by 4. Right? Because this one was cos. Of 11 pi over 12. When I multiply both sides by 4, I would get 4 cos 11 pi over 12. And that would be my final answer. Uh, questions for practice on your pi over 12 questions are number 7.